I don't know where to begin. Yeah. So guys, here's my spoiler free review of The Dark and The Wicked. And yeah, no spoilers here, but I am gonna talk about the story because you kinda have to, especially if you wanna know if this is for you because I can tell you right now, this is not for everyone, no. I normally don't see other reviews before I see a movie because I don't wanna subconsciously say what other people say, but I was excited to see this and I saw other reviews and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm probably gonna get some hate in the comments section because everybody's pretty much said the same thing about this movie. Emotionally exhausting, some nightmare imagery. Definitely, I agree with that stuff. And this is a good movie, but scary to the point that we're gonna have nightmares for like ever or shit like that. After what I heard, I was ready to put on freaking diapers just in case I peed myself like right on the spot. No, didn't happen. I mean, fear is subjective. And I'm not somebody who's like, oh, I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, I, don't know. I saw Pet Cemetery when I was a kid, and the you know Zelda she, when she's like Rachel. Yeah, that screwed me up, dude. I didn't sleep for like a freaking week when I saw that crap. So yeah, like I can be afraid. I'm just it just didn't feel it here. And again, don't get me wrong, it's got some great stuff, especially last 30 minutes. First review I ever did was Hereditary. That's the first video I ever did on YouTube. And this movie and Hereditary actually do have a lot in common. Starting with the vibe, you feel tension from the beginning to the end of this film, and there are no breaks. This is also a great looking film. The camera angles that are wide, freaking fantastic. They zoom in slowly, awesome, and you just feel this dread around the corner. And I like a movie that does things with just like silence. That's freaking cool. And yeah, it's about a brother and sister that come to a farmhouse to hang out with their father who pretty much should be in hospice already. And as they're waiting around for him to die, creepy stuff starts to happen. Yeah. Now the problem here with this movie is the waiting around. And I love a slow burn, I do. I have no problem with that, I love that stuff. But here, the problem is while you're waiting for scary stuff to happen, it's freaking depressing, dude. I mean, bad. Everyone is sad the entire time. It's like you're at a funeral talking about COVID and politics. That's what it feels like. And the problem with that is because everybody's so freaking bummed out right from the get-go, you kind of have a hard time kind of caring about these characters. And it's not the actor's fault. Everybody acted great in this. The acting was fantastic from beginning to end. Everybody, yes. But you're just bummed out being around them. Everyone just sitting around moping and talking about death. And when I say death, I don't mean like cool death, like, oh wow, that happened in a horror movie. No, I'm talking about like, oh, your parents are really old and they're gonna die. Yeah. If that doesn't sound like fun to you, it, it's not, no. But if it does sound familiar, sitting around and doing nothing while being concerned about your older parents Health? That may sound familiar, yes, because that's what we've been doing the entire year of 2020. Fun times! And listen man, this movie, I, I think if it... Uh, I hate when movies Hollywood it up, especially horror movies. I like that independent dark stuff because to me it's just better quality. I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but I think this movie probably could have used a little bit of Hollywood in it. Just a little glaze, a little bit of color, maybe like one freaking joke. Throw a Care Bear in there, even the blue sad one, fucking I'll take that. Normally, in a horror movie, you're like, don't split up, don't split up. No, bro, here, you're begging for them to split up because that's the only time shit happens. Whenever people are together, when they split up, cool stuff happens. And I like that it's not just the basic scare stuff that we've seen in like a thousand movies. They actually get creative with this. But the mystery of it is really the interesting part. And I don't know, but I didn't feel the fear because maybe I was just so mentally drained already from just the somber, grim mood. It's like you're down to the point where you're, there's no room for fear. And again, I'm not bashing the movie. I, this was a really good movie, it was. But I just think there's an excellent movie in here somewhere. Because again, once the scary stuff happens, you're like, bro, why did I have to wait 50 minutes for this? Because that's when it starts to get really creative and it's an hour and a half movie. Something else I normally don't like in horror movies are jump scares, cheap ones. This movie has a lot of jump scares towards the you know, the last like 30, 40 minutes and I, I welcome it. I'm happy. Why? Because we're not sitting around thinking about death. And listen, man, stuff happens that is really cool here. Without going into detail, there's like hallucinations and things. You see things happen and they don't happen or they didn't happen. And it's cool. It's eerie. The weird thing is you can actually say these stories to somebody like at a, in a campfire or like a scary bedtime story. And dude, I think it's actually better if you tell somebody this stuff that happens instead of showing it in the movie. It's almost like this should have been a book. Maybe it's based on a book. I didn't do my research. I never do. That's why my videos suck. But yeah, this feels like when you watch it, you're like, oh, the book was better, but there's no book, I don't think. There should be. 
And every time the horror does stop, it goes back to the depressing mood. And it's like, man, and all of a sudden they split up and you're like, yes. And then stuff starts happening when people are together and you're like, yes, yes. And another good thing about this movie is that it does show why characters do certain things for the most part. So it's smart. Oh, why don't you leave the farmhouse? That's common sense, right? No, it gives you a reason why you can't. And I like that. I appreciate that. Because how many times do we see horror movies and we're like, bro, why don't you just freaking leave? Stay at like a freaking Holiday Inn or some crap. No, here it's explained and I like that. It's, it's cool. One thing that is kind of dumb without going into detail is that a certain character doesn't believe in God or the devil or supernatural stuff, but they're experiencing it. And they're freaked out when they experience things. And they're like, holy crap, that just happened. But then they doubt it again. So that's some horror movie bad decision stuff or just kind of dumb. Also, a character is triggered to do something because of certain imagery, and the whole time you're watching it, you can't help but be like, bro, you know hallucinations are happening. Don't you just want to stop and confirm real quick? Nope. But dude, that's Nick picking. and listen, as the movie goes on, you like it more and more and more and more and more and more, and the mystery gets good, and everything's getting really good, and I'm like, this is awesome. Something else that's really cool is that there's a lot that's not explained, and I kind of like that because at the end of the day, some higher or lower power, like, the devil or whatever as humans we're not supposed to understand that it's like it's over our heads we don't we, like we can't grasp that right it makes sense it's like oh like i found a book and i just read the passage and the demons are gone kind of stuff no bro stuff happens here you're just like i don't know does that mean this movie has like layers and depth i think i've heard some people say that i don't agree there's a difference between layers and depth and ambiguity they are not always one and the same and this movie is intentionally ambiguous yes so as far as explaining the ending of this i think it's pretty much up to you the viewer what you thought and it's speculation but it's still fun where it ended up going was cool but the journey to get there may not be for everybody bro like it's freaking yeah but still a good watch and you know what i will watch it again one more time after that i'm yeah i'm not gonna watch this again third freaking time this is not gonna be on repeat dude people say the title the dark and the wicked is accurate it is you can also call it the depressing and the wicked yeah that, that works too i don't know tell me what you thought in the comments please please do i really want to know what this movie yes and thanks for watching <laughs>